We just saw a clip of Murder Mystery 2 that you can catch on Netflix, which, by the way, is available right here on Roku. Coming up on Friday, it is Murder Mystery 2, Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston, and you, Mark Strong, who kind enough to come here. Uh, we spoke on the phone just a few months ago, and now here you are. Uh, it, it was actually a couple of years ago. A couple it of was, years ago? Yeah, we worked out it was 2020. I had a show called Temple. That's right. And you were kind enough to kind of let me come on and have a chat about it. Yeah. Uh, but that's how time flies. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. felt it was... Wow. You didn't correct the record over there. <laughs> and you know, I thought and, it was a few months ago and you're as well. The, you're the official record cor corrector of the Rich Eisen show, Chris. I'll double check. Well, I mean, and it's just great to, you know, see um, you here. And last night was the premiere. Yes. Correct, right? Yeah. Um, and Sandler and Aniston and you getting back together. You shot this in Paris? That's yeah, you shot we... This, we um, during COVID, I have really enjoyed being at home with the family. I've got yes. two teenage boys. And okay. I realize how much I miss kind of just being around them. So... Yes. I said to my agent, you know, if jobs come up, can I just, I don't want to travel too much. I'd mm -hmm. like to be in London if possible. And yeah, sure. she said, okay, but there's, um, there's a problem. I said, what's that? She said, there's a job, but the locations might be a problem. And I said, why? She said, well, they're Hawaii and Paris. <laughs> I said, let me think about that for one second. I can make an exception. <laughs> yeah, right. Those I'll do. And we had the most amazing location. Hawaii was gorgeous. And right. Paris, I think we spent five weeks there. It was uh, wonderful. And what's it like to be on the set with Sandler and... What do you got for me on Adam Sandler? In in my business, I think any film set is kind of controlled or, or um, the flavor of it comes yes. from above. Yes. And because he and Jen are such lovely people, yes. it really was genuinely a kind of a love fest. Everybody got on. We had a good time, and it was fun to do. Right. And you say Sandler does all his own stuff. Dance, yeah, up right? to a point, I think. Right. I mean, the two of us are cracking on. I mean, I, I'm not speaking for him, but I do know that there is one point in the movie where, or, or I think it happened in uh, rehearsal, where I, I'm choking him at one point, and yes. then in order to get up, I levered myself off his shoulders. Yes. And they had to go, no, no, you shouldn't do that, because remember, you're... Uh, you're tough. You oh, know, right. You, should, you shouldn't be levering yourself anywhere. Off my of, back was aching. Uh, my knees were going. Right. Oh, but off. But Adam's shoulders are broad enough for you to, probably, to handle yeah, all yeah. of that stuff. He just won the Mark Twain Award uh, oh, last, I, I, I guess, or that, that aired last night. Obviously, I, he was he was uh, at the premiere last night. Yeah. And just he's just he really is some really good people. I really I like really him enjoy him. Jennifer was was um, as well. Was was yeah, she's also gorgeous, but right. was just telling him off for not wearing a suit. Well, he doesn't do that. No, I know. No, he doesn't. Although he did apparently when he collected the Mark Twain, he was in a suit. Oh well, I he guess said looking that. very uncomfortable. So what was he in the sweats last night? Is yeah. that what he did? Yeah. That's it, right? That's what you want to do in life. Yeah, that's, is the, that's the goal. Make a movie with uh, Jennifer Aniston and Mark Strong, put it on Netflix, and just wear your sweats whenever you want. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, if I recall in our conversation, you were a fan of Arsenal, correct? Yes, yeah. All right. Now, what is the genesis of this? Are you from the area, the neighborhood? Or, yeah, okay. I was born in Islington in North London, which is where basically um, you, could, you could grow up with it. Red and white, the Arsenal colors. Yes. And uh, I started going to games when I was about seven. I now have a season ticket, and uh, I go with friends when I can, when I'm not filming. And uh, we're doing incredibly well this season. Well, you're in first place, right? Yeah, now. we're eight points clear of City, who uh -huh. have all the money and all the players. So we've just got to hang on for ten more games. Well, now, Arsenal is, is owned by an insanely rich individual who... Uh, whose team won the uh, Super Bowl two yeah. years ago yeah. and has a team that can win the NBA championship this year in Stan Kroenke. So yeah. how, how does, I don't understand, you're, you're, how, does, how is this man out? Well, what we're hoping is that having done the, you know, having, sorry, having sorry. won the, um, you know, uh, the Super Bowl yes. and the, the team doing very well, he's going to just pay a little attention to, to the little soccer team to back in the UK that need a bit of help just to get over the line. I just, I don't know if I told this story the last time that you were on, Mark, but um, a couple of years ago, um, the NFL uh, held a game. Well, they, they've done it in multiple years, but the first time they held an NFL game in Tottenham Stadium yeah. um, was when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were the home team and they were red. Right. So there was red all around Tottenham <laughs> Stadium. And all I heard yeah. all week was from Arsenal fans who loved yeah. that their colors were yeah. dominating the stadium in Tottenham. That they just, they, they found that funny. Do you know where that rivalry comes from? The, no. The, because Arsenal were originally a South London team. Mm -hmm. It was Woolwich Arsenal, which is, um, it was a team made up of the guys that worked in the munitions factory down yes. in South London. Yes. In the 30s, the team was moved to North London, which mm. traditionally was Tottenham's territory. Yes. Because Tottenham is just east of Arsenal, but they're both North London teams. Mm -hmm. 
So they were furious about that. And that's where it actually comes from. And I think in the season that we were promoted, they were relegated. And there was some skullduggery that went on. I don't Good quite use know. of skullduggery, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. It's a rare word that's dropped here on the Rich Eisen Show. Normally, it's a two-syllable word, other than and it's, <laughs> it's lost on many people. But I'm sorry, I don't mean well, to interrupt you, but go ahead. Well, no, just that whenever we win, yes. if we beat them, the, the expression is North London is red. Right. So they would have hated it. So the stadium had red all over What would a championship for Arsenal mean for you? Like, how would you say? Well, it'd be the first time, I think, in 20 years that we've, we'll win the, the league. Mm -hmm. We've been a good FA Cup team. Um, we've seen money come into the game. You know, Chelsea and City are very, very powerful, rich backers. And yes. they basically, I think David Dean, who used to run Arsenal, said that uh, Roman Abramovich come and parked his tanks and was firing 50 pound notes <laughs> at us. That's a good line. Um, I like that. Yeah, so we just need to, if we could do that, it would be. It would be wonderful. Okay. Uh, I, we've got Mark Strong here on the Rich Eisen Show, Murder Mystery 2, available on Netflix uh, on Friday, March 31st, right here on the program. We have a, uh, a game we like to play called Celebrity True or False, certainly with our celebrity friends who show up here in studio where we read a couple things about your career on the Internet and we're wondering if it's true or not. Okay. Okay, here we go. We have actually terrific uh, production value to go along with it. Here it is. Celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. There you go. Uh, all right, Mark Strong, long before your career, and again, the movies that you're in, just awesome. Syriana, uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, the uh, Zero, Zero Dark Thirty is amazing. Uh, the Imitation Game, and so on and so forth. But long before you were in college, true or false, you sang in not one, but two punk rock bands. Is that true or false? It's very true, yeah. I'm a child of the 70s. I was a teenager around about the time punk arrived, and uh, it was just so much more dangerous and interesting than anything else that was in the charts at the time. Okay. And so what were the, do you recall the names of your punk I rock I think band? we used to enjoy making up lots of different names. I remember the first band, we, I think we finally ended up with something like Toxoid, I think was the name of Toxoid? the band. Toxoid? Toxoid. We literally looked it up in a dictionary. It related to poison. We thought that would do. <laughs> okay. And the second one was, uh, we hadn't really thought it through. We called the band Private Party. The idea being that people would think it was a private party and wouldn't turn up. And we hadn't really thought that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your, wait, your band assumed your fan base was non-existent? Hmm. You got a, we the were 14. You know, oh, what, you were four, this yeah, is, this is you like were? we were at school. So this was not in college. You're talking about No, no, school. this was, there was, a, there was a, 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 an ad appeared in the music mags in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in the UK. And literally, it was a picture of three guitar chords. And it said underneath this, here's three chords, go out and form a band. Yes. And I was at boarding school. I was at a state boarding school at the time. We literally did that. I said, okay, you go buy a bass this weekend. You get a snare drum. You know, you get a microphone. And we just put it together, made some noise. Were you a front man? Were you the front man? I played bass and sang. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you played bass. So you're the McCartney. I was, yeah, a cross between McCartney and a little bit of John Lennon. Well, I mean, the, the bass and, yeah. and singing. Yes. That's it, right yeah, there. Yeah, okay. we had a lead singer as well. I suppose I was backing vocals. Okay. All right. You're, you're too nice, man. You should definitely say, yeah, I was the McCartney of Private Party. <laughs> like, that's the way you should go. All right, next one for you. Uh, and just, this is where it, it comes from uh, uh, a position of respect and love. All you got to do is look at my friend Chris Brockman and look at me. Yes. True or false, Mark Strong, you lost your hair in your mid-20s. Yes. Is that true? Yes, yes, I did. I felt very comfortable coming into a room with a lot of sensible haircuts. <laughs> yeah. We call it the bald brotherhood. Bald brotherhood. <laughs> right. We bald brotherhood. I, so, was, I was working at the National Theatre at the time, and I don't know if you've been to London much, but it, yes. the National Theatre is the other side of Waterloo Bridge. Okay. It's a very windy bridge. All right. And the day I walked across and my hair blew up like this, and I realised I was actually trying to hide... And it just the come over thing going? Yeah, a little bit. Not badly, but a li enough that when it blew on the bridge and I was walking to work at the National, mm. I went, okay, that's enough. And so know. so if you let it grow, what what would what, what we have? A horseshoe? What would we have going on? I would on have this at the side. That's it? I'd have a, that's, yeah. That's, you're the same thing, too. Same thing. I'm yeah. holding on. Like, whenever I get uh, sitting in, like, a makeup chair or whatever for uh, another shoot, not here, um, but somebody might like say, hey, there's a couple of hairs right here. Do you mind if I clip? I say, leave them. Yeah. They are fighting oh, exactly. a significant battle still <laughs> to this day. Yeah. I will not personally cut them down. I will not do that. Well, the tragedy, of course, is that my ears and my nose yes. and my eyebrows are doing really well. Isn't that odd? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that strange? 
Yeah. It is. The weirdest thing. All right. So it requires a lot of maintenance on your part is what you're saying. Yeah. Mark Strong had no idea he'd be talking about his hair on the Rich Eisen <laughs> show when he came all the way down here in the ring. Uh, all right. Last one for you. True or false, Mark Strong. Uh, Daniel Craig uh, is a former roommate of yours and is a godfather to one of your sons. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. We, we uh, did a show together in the mid-90s called Our Friends in the North in the UK. It was a very successful TV show. Yes. And we became friends and we shared a flat. And we lived together for about a year. Mm -hmm. And we've kept in touch ever since. And uh, yeah, he's godfather to my eldest boy. Okay. Um, what was he like as a roommate? He was very lazy. What do you mean? I did most of the tidying up. Is that right? Yeah. He, I don't even know if he paid me rent. It was my <laughs> flat. I think he still owes me. Um, oh, wow. I should bring that up with him. Wow. So... Uh, yeah, Bond is a is a uh, a scoff. Uh, he's, he's, he's a scoff law or something like that. I wouldn't dare. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay, dare I, wouldn't, suggest I, I, that, I will he, say that. Okay, but no. But right. he's a, he's a great guy. We had a lot of fun. Huh. Yeah. Okay, and he's a godfather to one of your children. He is, and a very attentive one too. He just bought my son a really cool jacket, you know, for his 18th birthday, and he's a you know he's he's around. I don't see him enough because he lives in Brooklyn these days, and I'm in London. He's in Brooklyn, huh? Yeah. So you just strolling. People could be strolling around and and. You know, in Brooklyn, and all of a sudden you see Daniel Craig coming around. Oh, yeah, the corner. yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you got a good Sasha Baron Cohen story? I know you guys were in the movie Grimsby together about yes. uh, seven, eight years ago. You got a good one? Yeah, that uh, a lot of them I can't repeat, but uh, <laughs> he he um, he's driven. I think the, 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 my funniest story is when we left after filming. Uh -huh. um, I was carrying my bags. I was really tired. I was getting towards the plane. He was just slightly ahead of me, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I literally heard him just whispering to one of the stewards, mm -hmm. a very well-dressed, very well-presented steward. Sasha was saying, my boyfriend and I are very tired. Could you give us the best seats? <laughs> just as I walked up going, what did you say? What did he say? <laughs> and did you get uh, And we got the best seats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he knows how to work it. Okay. And he was, he, I mean, by 2016, he was in full Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. You know, Bloom. There's no question about that. He's great fun to work with. I mean, it's hard to keep a straight face with him. That's the problem. There's a lot of improvising, and he goes off on one, and it's just, it's just. It's Who's difficult. the biggest badass you've ever worked with, then, Mark? Badass in real life or character-wise? Um, the one that might actually combine. Oh my God! How about that one? Maybe Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta was. I did a film called Revolver with Ray Liotta, mm -hmm. and. Um, he was meant to kind of menace my character, but rather than get physical with me, what he decided was he was going to wear this very, very tight pair of underpants, leave his dressing gown open, and I was sitting and he was standing. Mm -hmm. And he basically came <laughs> way too close to me when we did the scene and just looked down at me from above, and that's how we played the scene. And I had Ray's Leotis. manhood, you know, <laughs> right. way too close to my face. A lot of Leota. A lot of Leota. Okay. Me, yeah. And you had no idea that was the, the, that was his the acting to do maneuver he was going to employ. But, but, his, but brilliant. It know. worked? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it threw you off your cane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't expect that one either. Well, there you go. He, this, he was a lovely guy, though. He was also... There, there are no badasses, really. I mean, we're all, it's all just pretend. Well, it's funny. You'll see in our green room... Mark is a Goodfellas poster in our green room. I, I don't saw, know if you saw that. I saw. Okay, when you go back there, take a look at Ray's head in the poster behind the plexiglass. You'll see it's behind uh, a broken, sort of cracked part of the plexiglass. Yeah, I saw. It's that. because he used an axe, the back side <laughs> of an axe, when he was here on the show to try and break it open and <laughs> re-sign it, because he told me. Much to my surprise here, it was akin to having his ro robe open and seeing his Leotas, <laughs> is that he, he surprised, told me on the air that his autograph on that poster that I had spent a significant amount of money on at a charity auction was fake. <gasps> no, And really so he's wasn't. like, I'll re-sign it. He wanted to open it and try to bash it with an ax to open it, and he bashed his own head on the poster, which makes it an even better story. It does. I thought it was a bullet hole. <laughs> it could know. have been. Yeah. No, but he, he couldn't have been nicer. And obviously when he passed, we were just all blown away by the that. truly you know. worrying part of that story is where on earth do you find an ax? That's yeah. a good point, too. <laughs> right. You know? I don't, yeah. We don't still have that ax no, anymore. I don't think so. Where did he find the ax? Uh, it was just like in a back 
I don't know. Somewhere. That's a good, really? by the way, just excellent lying around. follow-up, Mark. Here. Excellent follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. It does sound like a, a scene from Murder Mystery 2, to be very honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, which you can catch on Netflix coming this Friday, March 31st. It's available right here on Roku. What a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming all the way down here. My total pleasure. Appreciate Thank that. You. It's Mark Strong. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 